Ready? <laughs> so people like to don't don't make me do it. <laughs> don't make me. I'll turn these lights off and on so fast. <laughs> It's time I'm a passionate speaker. I don't know where to get that from. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 32-10, and th this is all you need to let me get through. <laughs> this is all I need to get through. Um, we are a video game music podcast. Every week, we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Purdue. And every week, we listen to great music. And we talk oh. about how people like to say that the collectathons are coming back, but I have to say that I want them to come back. And <laughs> I'm just joking, but that's what we were talking about before the we episode were, yeah, we started. Yeah, were, we were really getting into it. You were really getting into it. And um, but people say I'm a passionate speaker, and I don't believe them, but maybe it's true. I think you're passionate. We're, we're passionate about games, and we have someone else on the show. Last week we had a fantastic guest, um, Dedeco, all the way from Brazil, a VGM club DJ, which we all believed should be a thing is a thing and he's amazing at it um and but this week we have another fantastic guest we have an old friend who is on this side of the pond on this side of the pond on this side of the coast who is um also awake with us <laughs> <laughs> it's same our, time, so. our buddy matt matt thanks so much for coming back on the show it's been it's been a few years yeah thanks for having me back um i don't know if i can follow up uh a dj who does a, a video game <laughs> Music club DJ thing. I am, yeah. Well, it depends. Let's see. I don't know if I can follow that. Let's see. Can you, can you go wicky, 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 wow? I mean, uh, sometimes. But, <laughs> okay, uh, well, well, then you're in. Then you're in. Uh, you know, <laughs> digitally. I, you know, I have to, like, you know, do it and then, like, you know, go back and edit it. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta, bring I only do the, the wiki and then, and then I, like, repeat the wiki, wiki part and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Just copy and paste. The, the three of us go way back, which is just fantastic to get back together and to catch up and, and, and to talk games. And I think did you you picked the topic, right? You wanted to do this topic. Stank Stank Face yes. Jams, part two. Yes. Love right. it. Uh, I mean, just, we just can all like songs that make you go, ooh. Stank oh, yes. Bunker. Yeah. Mm. So uh, we talked about it with Cam. Ooh, that's good. Cameron on the on the last episode of uh, the first episode of Stank Face Jams. Um, uh, some people in the uh, electronic music world would call it bass face, but we were calling it stank face. Mm, yes, because most likely someone's playing. Bass players also play it, but call it bass face. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. All right, uh, uh, excellent. Because so, <laughs> but stank I would imagine face gives you the cool. You get the. It's like honestly, stank the, face stands right. Like what is stank face? Oh, I know what a stank face is. What is a bass face? Right. Well, you got to go and explain. It's not related to fish. I swear. It's actually more akin <laughs> to something else. You know, stank face is that guy we used to work with, Rick. Um, yeah. When Rick. we worked at TransUnion. Oh he, yeah. Uh, he recently, just this week, used the phrase uh, "bass face." So, oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> See now, and he gotta, plays bass so professionally. We, now we got to get him into like, no, change it up, man. It's all about the stank. Yeah, stank face. <laughs> So these, so not necessarily heavy tracks, not necessarily like like heavy metal, not necessarily rock music. Just it's something that, like a a bass lick comes in or a drum fill comes in that just makes you go, ooh. The funny thing though is, ooh, like you smelled something funky. I feel like I I will say I feel like this. These in the realm of video game music. This is probably my weakness or one of my many weaknesses. So this should be interesting if my tracks even count <laughs> yeah, in some I, element of funk or stank. Okay. I'm gonna propose in the next couple up next few episodes we do topics based on specific game genres because once we start doing like musical genres and like musical things like I start to like get really interested and you're like I'm having a hard time. Oh Rob. come on <laughs> I want to do Heart of the Cards real soon and yeah. then we got like a whole episode devoted to Kinyo Kinyo Kunio Kun? Kunio Kun. See, but I can do that. Yeah, there you go. See, we can do that. We can do that. But, but if but we want we a, whole the cards. a whole episode devoted to folk rock, it's going to be hard. Well, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you name a game immediately that has folk rock in it? Yeah. Um, um, Bastion. Oh. That doesn't count. Yeah. That was a freebie. Yeah, I, that's uh, absolutely. <laughs> that was a freebie. <laughs> Guess what? Never even played that game. Can you think of another game, just, that, can you think of a game that has funk in it? Right. Bastion. <laughs> <laughs> you think of a game that has soul in it? Darren Korb just covers all the bases. He's, he's, he's got I, just, all. I just I just listened for anything with Shoji Maguro. The kid picked up Funk his soul. bass guitar and he wailed out a mean stank face. <laughs> Shoji Maguro <laughs> is is the funk soul brother of the of, of Japanese RPGs. Isn't what he? soul brother? The funk soul brother. Sweet sweet <laughs> what? Check it out now. <laughs> Check it out, man. Books. <laughs> um, 
So, Matt, what's what's your experience yes. with, if you don't mind me um, putting you on the spot here, your experience with, 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 with jams, stank face jams and games? Like, like... Like so, what happens? What happens to you? <laughs> what happens to your body? I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You know, I'll be playing a game, and then when the track just hits that spot, you go, "Ooh, oh yes!" And you need sometimes you need to stop playing to just go, "Ooh," and take it in. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes you have to rewind. Sometimes you have to rewind. Hit the pause sometimes. button and hope they don't sleep or the pause music it. on you. Yeah, pause it. Right. Unless it's Battletoads, and then you get the... The only good thing about that game. <laughs> the only good thing about that game. <laughs> you get a good beat for the, for the pause. Yes, uh, honestly, it is. <laughs> oh, my God. That blasted game. I love I love that game. I don't care how like hard and horrible... And, oh, I and, love and hard games. Is. I hate Battletoads. <laughs> I just... I, there's a whole cup with me saying how much I hate you, that you, game. You guys tortured yourself with that game. I, I gave Twice. My, I, let, I, I let myself enjoy it, you know? No, no, that was, that was like, meant to be... I let myself acquire it like a really bitter beer. No, or no, you understand. Strong coffee. You understand. You know? That doesn't Matt. make a good episode of a, of a YouTube show. Though. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> See, Matt torturing already yourself liked... with it makes a pretty good episode. The thing about like Matt liked Battletoads. He already liked it. It wasn't. He wasn't torturing anything. Yeah. He was already down for the cause. I was the guy who was like, "This game is hot trash." From what I've heard, I'm going to experience it for the very first time and find out for myself. And every step of the way, it was like someone was pulling my damn teeth. Yeah. It was that, rough. That reminds me then. So before we even get any more further, we've talked about Matt. We've talked about Battletoads. <laughs> we've, we've talked about Stank Face James. We're past that. We need to talk about your YouTube show. The, uh, the Purnell and Matt oh, yeah. play games. Our listeners need to know about you two playing games together. It is a show that is not rated G, so let's get that out of the way. But it's humorous. True. It's humorous cursing. Although not I, the bad I feel stuff. like over time we've, or maybe it's just me now that I have kids that are getting older and that might see it on YouTube. <laughs> I haven't been cursing as much lately on it. <laughs> I, I mean, don't know. I mean, the thing about it is, like, are you going think... back and like, like, like taking them down? <laughs> well, the reason is, I mean, you laid on a table. No. The reason why, at least, I don't think I think I'm in the same boat. But the reason may not be so much for kids because I don't know where my kids are, but they need to get their butts home. The lights are out on the streetlights right. are on. But um, it was more like we ch we shifted a bit. Like when we first started doing it, it was called Pernell and Math Play Games, and the general focus was specifically on playing games that were notoriously hard as kids mm. were talked up as being difficult right. back then. And determining if that holds true now that we're old men, and um, a number of them totally did, <laughs> but it was part of the fun. Are of they experience. easier now now that we have experience, or are they harder now now that we don't have the time and uh, reflexes? To I think it's the latter, not it. the former. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing about <laughs> it, it, it kind of depends on the game. Exactly. Oh, okay. like, right. If you watch certain episodes, we actually got to the end. It was like, what did you think? Like, well, technically, here's where it lays out. In some cases, memory failed us too. Like, mm -hmm. we learned things about the yeah. games that we forgot about. Like Blaster Master is a big one for that, uh, but wow. af but I'm after we did ages. that, we, over time, like I'm pretty sure it was Matt in this case, but I agreed with him. He was like, "Look, you know, I'm tired of playing these games that are hard all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we stay up to like two in the morning. I got kids. I gotta go to work in the morning. Right. You just like sleep, run on three hours, that, sleep like it's nothing, Pernell. So yeah, that and and now we like make one episode a year, <laughs> and then it takes me like a year to get around to editing it because I have so much other stuff going on, and then. And then I'm like, oh no, I didn't edit the, the video. And then I get anxiety about getting into editing the video. And then yeah. so it becomes a whole cycle. Oh, I um, understand. So <laughs> I just, we just put a new one out, uh, maybe a month or two ago that mm -hmm. we recorded last year. <laughs> so I was you know, maybe that. we can do another one with a quicker turnaround. Yeah, you're, you're, you're both grayer now. I've noticed. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. well, Matt has hair that can be gray. I just, I'm just uh, well, your hair is just in different parts of your face. <laughs> it ran away from the scalp. <laughs> But like, but yeah, you can pull it off. I don't think I could pull that off. So I'm, <laughs> you know, it can turn whatever color it wants as long as it sticks around. Well, a, a lot of, I was thinking like, because I'm I'm graying on the sides. So I think a lot of, a lot of uh, people bleach their hair before they add color. If we're naturally bleaching mm -hmm. our hair, then why don't we just make it blue? Oh, orange, imagine purple. if you could just sure. bleach your scalp and purple just it like, up. you know what? Now I'll I got purple hair. it up. <laughs> Rhythm and pixels. Purple it up. Purple it up. <laughs> purple de nurple. Purple it. Purple nurple it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get into some music and then talk about everything else other than music. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Stank Face Jams. Um, Matt, our yes. guest, will you ask our guests to go first? Can you please introduce mm. your first track? Okay, so we're, we're not going to talk about the track too much until after 
if I remember correctly, right? We I just introduce it and then we play it and then we talk about it. Is Unless it you is? have some cool lead in magic you want to run into. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not your dad. I, you can do what you want. Okay. <laughs> Here, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll preface this by saying this is not the first game that made me realize that video games had, like, music, music. That might have been, like, Marble Madness or something in the arcade back in the day, which made me go, ooh, that's a, that yeah. actually has some music. This is the first game that made me realize that video game music could be good. And this is Maniac Mansion on the NES, and uh, this is Michael's theme. Yee. Back, you're listening to Michael's theme from Maniac Mansion for the NES Nintendo Entertainment System, composed by Dave Govett. Ooh, this has got, mm. I, I gotta say, like, as far as NES soundtracks go, this sounds like nothing. Like, all, like uh, uh, not just like metal melody or, or, or rhythm or, or funk or as it is. The sound of it, it sounds so different from any other soundtrack on the NES. It's such like a hard edge <laughs> Like punch to the drums and punch to the um, the bass. It's really yeah. really interesting. Um, it's that bass line that gets me uh, the, with with like the you know the the gliss up the bring your wear like it just. Ooh. Did you just reference a, a, a glissando? I did. Hell yeah. I did. I'm so Hell happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah. That's all reference. I mean I played I I played trombone <laughs> for many years and that's all trombones do. Is glissando. <laughs> that's that was their jam. Yeah, we're gonna have an we're gonna have an arpeggio episode. Maybe we'll have a glissando episode after that. Oh god, I don't know what I can do with the glissando. Pr- Pranel's like, I need Italian lessons. <laughs> I really do, <laughs> Mamma Mia! Right. <laughs> so yeah, you know, when, when the note bends, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a gliss glissando. So what? So uh, w- Maniac Mansion. How how is it? How's it? How has it affected you? How's it hanging? How's it hanging? I, that was one of my favorite games um, as a kid. It, it was. It looks like it came out in 1987, so I guess I was eight or nine when I played it. It was one of those games that I rented all the time mm. from Blockbuster or West Coast Video or movies or whatever. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I eventually bought it, and it was um, it was so weird and goofy, and you know, kind of made fun of you know like slasher movies, but then had just like this guy who would get upset if he stole his hamster and, you know it was just weird and funny and i, I love like weird aid yes exactly that's a that's the guy um yeah, and it's funny because like at, at that age you're talking about like eight or nine or even seven like kids i remember like you're you're interested in horror like scary stuff and thrilling stuff like roller coasters and scary movies like a little bit you start to be like, why are people into this? Like, why why is that interesting? Um, and so you start to like kind of get interested in it. And Maniac Mansion's like a yeah. fun way to explore that because it's all right. It's all parody and it's all jokes. I do it's honestly safe. feel like I missed safe, yeah. I missed the bubble there because I remember when Nintendo Power covered the game. And I remember seeing the box on the shelf. 
but I never found myself drawn to the game. I remember the whole thing with the hamster in the microwave. Like I said, I remember Weird Ed. I remember the woman in the black dress and the weird mad scientist. But for some yep. reason, that was pre like, hey, you want to play this wacky adventure game where you're making a lot of option choices and like, eh, my brain's no more in need of like hypertension things. Um, so, but now I'm older, the game hasn't gotten any remakes or anything like that. And I question if I could go back to it as an ancient old head type and experience it anew today. Like, hmm. I don't know. I've never played this game ever. Like, in, in I'm, I don't even think I even knew about Maniac Mansion when NES was like a thing until much, much, much later. It was it was mostly a PC thing. Yeah, because yeah. it was a point and click adventure where you had to, you know, like LucasArts, you know, style where you click, you know, look and then you know, look at the door or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, never really made it to consoles except for Maniac Mansion. Un you know, until like... Uh, Shadowgate, you know, right? Started. Deja Vu. Yeah, Shadowgate was was definitely another one. Shadowgate and Deja Vu and stuff. Well, Deja Vu was um, a little different. Deja Vu was like a hyper card, like Maxis, like that old, old... Yeah. But it still had the whole, like, choose an option thing to, like, do things like yeah. look and interact and stuff like yeah, that. Just, yeah, it just didn't have that... It had, like, a vocabulary, like, on its own. Yeah. yeah it right. Was, um, but the one thing I, ha I have to say about this track specifically, I know it was a couple of years ago, at least, you had uh, someone on from uh, the One-Ups. Oh, Musk! Which is a, yeah, which is a, a video game cover band that I love. I, thought, I think they're great. Um, and I was excited when I saw that they did a cover of Michael's theme uh, from Maniac Mansion. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that was one of my favorite tracks! From back in the day, and they, they, you know, their instruments are great. It's going to be so funky. And I listened to it, and, you know, again, I love them, but it was like, <laughs> they, they were like, the bass part wasn't there. And I was like, oh no. Hey, where's the funk? Hey, kids. <laughs> hey, kids, Where remember that line because it might come back later to help us in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, and so I was like, ah, oh, oh no. <laughs> but you know, I, I like I like all their other stuff. I, I don't want to disparage no, no, them at I, all. But. I totally get that. Like sometimes I'll hear like I I'll look for a remix or a cover of a song that I already like, and I listen to it. And I'm like, it's interesting because the person arranging the music, they maybe like yeah. they're focusing on something different, and it's maybe, yep. it's just different. Everyone's hearing different things, and by that they're so, hearing like, what I'm speaks here. to them. But, but not like, what speaks to me. Like, I'm all, I'm, I go to being like, ooh, I wonder what they're going to do with that funky bass line. And it's like, sure. suddenly it's like a keyboard solo. And I'm like, no, that's not right. The, the funny thing <laughs> yeah. is that sometimes it's the opposite, too, where like you'll go to listen to something mm -hmm. and they'll like a cover and they'll emphasize a note or a rhythmic pattern that you didn't even hear originally in the right. song. But yeah. now you're like, holy crap, that's been here the whole time. Amazing. And like yep. for me personally, like I feel like when it comes to like music that I generally end up falling for, I find myself gravitating more towards the like I don't want to say the unsung notes because like a freaking Simpsons represent. It's the music they're not playing. Um, <laughs> Listen to the notes <laughs> they're not playing. Yep. But like I do find myself gravitating more towards like the more subtle aspects of a song, like the sure, backbeat sure. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You start to listen a little more closely to all the instruments, all the melodies. And on the NES, it's a little easier because there's only like five instruments <laughs> I could play at a time. The guy that's burping in sixteenths. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't think this one has any burping in it, fortunately. But um, oh, if you just turn this <laughs> part down and turn this part way up. But this one, Not I on think, track I mean, there's no samples in this, and I think there's just there's just probably just the four channels. Number you know? eight. Number eight. Number eight. I bet eight. you could get someone to burp the bass line to it. Though. You could, <laughs> and you know what? It would. Just, I, I think it would work. I think it would absolutely yeah. work. Yeah. That'd be a yep. great garbage. It'd be kind of. It'd be kind of gross. That's but. the cover I want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my next track, my first track, is um, we're going to keep it uh, classic. We're going to the Sega Genesis. This game is called Socket. Um, on the Mega Drive, it was called Time Dominator. Oh, Electric Duck! <laughs> it's an electric duck. I think I'm, I, what, I'm not... what a better name. <laughs> <laughs> Time Dominator. Or Socket. Time Dominator. I don't know. I think I think they were like, let's bring it to North America. It's got to be cute. And they're like, okay, guys. It's an amazing game, an amazing soundtrack. It's called Time Dominator. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The kids. What about the kids? <laughs> Think about the children. <laughs> children don't need domination with the attitude, of anything. You know, like the, the Genesis era of, of you know, Sonic 2 Yeah, but Time Dominator yeah, but not be the American name for it? <laughs> yeah, but true. imagine if Sonic the Hedgehog was called, like, Speed Decimator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speed Decimator, fastest thing alive. He's gonna kill the clock. I picked a couple. I picked a few tracks. This this is an amazing soundtrack. 
Um, we're going to listen to Special Zone 2 um, Fence from the game Socket for the Sega Genesis. The composers are Shigenori Masuko, Yoko Suzuki, and Fumito Tamayama. And um, I, I came across this game in the soundtrack because of Shigenori Masuko did the music for um, uh, uh, Battle... Battletoads. Battletoads. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Battle Mania. Oh, okay. Uh, Battle Mania. Daigen Jao. Battle Mania, Daigen Jao, which is fan- one of the best soundtracks for the Sega Genesis. I, I Sky think. Laundry for days. Um, so this is a, a, kind of a similar style. So we, I know that he is on this track. So here we go. This is from Socket for the Sega Genesis. <laughs> You are listening to uh, Special Zone 2, Fence, from the game Socket for the Sega Genesis, composed by Shigenori Masuko. I believe he is the main composer on this track. Um, also along with Yoko Suzuki and Fumito Tamayama. Just one of the coolest soundtracks for the Sega Genesis. Um, I, lo- I love it when... Right there. Right, right when that happened. Like when every- everything's together and then all of the sound drops out and there's like a little bit of a a beat of silence in between like the notes. That's a special sauce. Yeah, right before right like there's like a little bit of a like a snare or the bass comes back in. Just that it's a, it doesn't have to be long, just that quick little beat. And if they yep. do it too many times it loses it. If you, if you do it like every every time right there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this is a if really you do it every time then you you start to expect it. But if you do it just the once then suddenly you're listening for it. You're listening for it. Makes it. you go, ooh, ooh. Yeah, like, ooh, that was so good. Yeah. Oh, that Genesis bass, though. I love the Genesis bass. Mm. It's a good bass. Right. I've come around on it. I did. I did. I what didn't used to be into the the FM sound or whatever you mm. want to call that. It's, uh, but um, I, I I can appreciate it now. It's uh, it's real good. <laughs> with, with time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I've acquired the taste uh, the taste for it. Yeah. I I don't know. I feel like I grew grew up with it. Like the the Super Nintendo always sounded so weird to me, but. To me, like the Sega Genesis sounded like arcade music, and so I was like, oh, "That's how it's supposed to sound." You know? Right? Yeah, um, I can see that. And also, like that was like the sound of the, the that FM chip was was all over like pop music at the time too. So that's all that's all I wanted. But except for that that harsh guitar sound that like um, you'd hear in uh, Road Rash and things like that, mm-hmm. I love that sound. But I know that for a lot of people, it's just it's too much. I can't get my wife to listen to any like nes music like it, as soon as she hears like that kind of like square wave sound she's like oh turn it off turn it off if she heard yeah. the road rash soundtrack i i'd, I'd be divorced <laughs> <laughs> she just like, imagine that going to the courtroom <laughs> so you guys seem like such a loving happy couple what brings you to my courtroom today road well you rash. wouldn't turn off that dang road rash genesis genesis did <laughs> you're supposed to walk down the aisle to you know to um to the to the flat was it the <laughs> to Tennessee, the Tennessee theme from Road Rash 2. Yeah, who wouldn't want to get married to that? <laughs> or no, what, the, what, the, 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 there was another game that the guy composed on. It was uh, the guy I can't remember his name anymore. Um, uh, Skitchin. Oh, we cheese grater, cheese uh, grater. I think I'll have like weird like nineties grunge. I would things. get married to cheese grater, which is why I'm clearly single. But that's okay because <laughs> I still got cheese grater. <laughs> I track. I'm just. I, God, that game had such a good OST. And I wish it got sequels, because that's where I even learned the term and the concept of sketching was from that game. And yes, I did try it as a teenager, because that's the one time I was impressionable. <laughs> uh, Matt, <laughs> do, do you, uh, I can't remember. Yes. Were you the one who's also into Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yeah, you know, well, I used to be. Anyway, I, yeah. I tried to watch the new ones uh, on on Netflix, and they're okay, you know, but it just didn't hit the... Oh, How okay. does it compare to, so, like, something like Rift Tracks? Have you heard that before, Yeah, too? They're, they're, like, the same 
they're, they're, some of the same people. They're, they're, there's crossover. Are the same people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, the Netflix one actually like hit it really good, and I watch it. Okay, like, I put that's like my bedtime. Like I have to go to sleep. And, they, <laughs> nice. and there, there's a they did Mac and Me, which is a really lame oh, like, really? ET ripoff. And um, the kid, the main character, the kid, he's supposed to be like the fake Elliot. <laughs> he's he's in a wheelchair. Belly. And there's a one long chase scene where he's running, he's going down a hill, and he grabs the back of a truck, like <laughs> what? like a Back to the Future, <laughs> and he's skitching oh, in the wheelchair. In the wheelchair. <laughs> now that is amazing. And I'm like, oh man, those stunt, those 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 stunt actors. I hope they got paid real well for this movie. I may need to watch that in some point. Because the only thing I know about Mac and me is that one um, Paul Rudd joke they oh, do on Conan O'Brien. Yeah. That's the only thing I knew about Mac and me. Even in the context of the movie, it is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. It was like, and there's a random, like, the other scene that I've seen from it is when they, they go into a McDonald's or something. Yes. And it makes it, he makes everyone dance. Out of nowhere, no, they and then just, just walk like in, or, and there's already a dance party. Well, and, like, I mean, it then, makes sense. It's already happening. He it's saw the already food, happening. I mean, he saw the food folks in fun advertisements and felt oh. very insulted when mm. they weren't having fun when he walked in. It's so, it's yeah, that 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 part is just always very very strange. To me. But yeah, the, the new Mystery Science Theater, I love it. I love how fast they do things. Uh, Felicia Day and Pat yeah. Oswalt are like my new favorites. They're always Charlie, great. They're su super great. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie's on it. Charlie. Oh, Charlie from um, Supernatural. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh. I always forget. Nice. Every time I see her on that, I'm like, yeah, that's she's the girl from... Um, that's right. And she did that show on YouTube, like before YouTube the was YouTube. The Guild. Yeah. Yeah. Probably one of my biggest... <laughs> man, Pernod, you're a freaking idiot moments in my life. <laughs> uh, how are you supposed to know? Yeah, I, I was... I was you, know, I, I, you didn't know. I, I, don't think, okay, I don't think you've ever told the story on the podcast. Oh, I could have... No? Well, I'll tell it now because it's hilarious. And, or, and, uh, why would you do this way? So, like, <laughs> the very first time we... I want to say, Matt, you were there. Was it the year you were out no, there with Jack? No, I was, I was there. It was, it was just you and Jack, I think. I, I missed it out. I missed out on that. Where were you? So, like, I at, heard the story. So, at PAX, uh, the, one of the, either the first or second time I went to PAX Prime. So, back when it was in Seattle. When it was the Seattle one. It was only in Seattle. It was back when it was only in Seattle. Now there's, like, six of them. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're all over the freaking place. <laughs> but, like, we were in the elevator at the hotel going down to the lobby to walk over to the convention. And while we're in the elevator, there's a group of people in the elevator with us. And I saw this nice lady that was in there. And being me, being a nerd at a nerd convention, I was like, I should strike up a conversation with this apparently fellow nerd who's a female, too. Mm. So I was like, hi, how's it going? And she's like, hi, how's it going, all right? Like, are you here for PAX? Yeah. And I was I asked her, so what, like, what brought you here? Where are you from? And she told me, she's like, I'm out here because I want to promote my show on YouTube. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Well, like, I was like, is it new? She's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're moving along. It's doing pretty good. I'm like, well, honestly, if there's a place where you're going to pick up some steam and get up and get ahead, it's going to be a pack. So good luck. I hope you back out well here. We got off the elevator. And I was like, that was Felicia Day, man. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who the heck is Felicia Day? <laughs> <laughs> and I went and looked up the guild. I was like, oh. <laughs> well then, I hope I was still encouraging to her and not patronizing. It instead. sounded like you were being real positive, and she was probably like, "Oh wow, I'm at this convention where everyone knows who I am, and there's someone who like doesn't know who I am." Who's like, "You know, I hope you do really good today." <laughs> yeah, I just wanted her to succeed. And then I learned who it was. I was like, "Wow, you know," what? and that gave her the courage to um, right. go to auditions for Supernatural. Who knows? Maybe was well, she horrible. promoting um, uh, Doctor Horrible? That's probably Doctor Horrible she's promoting. It was just—it was like two thousand eight or nine, oh, maybe. Yeah. Right. But like, it was just really cool that that happened. But also, just why the? How did I not know what everyone else knew with this convention? <laughs> I don't understand nerd concepts, and popular things. I don't know. I'm going back to playing the world is with you. I like that. I don't understand nerd <laughs> concepts. Why? Why didn't I like sit in the corner of the elevator going? <laughs> 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 I like you. <laughs> <laughs> why do I have to be a nice person? Right. <laughs> Just have a normal person conversation with yeah. another normal person. Be <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, is just an internet celebrity. <laughs> this style, there's, a, there's, a, there's a parallel version of me that did exactly that. You know it. <laughs> he's like probably looking at me. He's like, why did I, I do know? that? Why did I let her think that I was so late? <laughs> why did I you hold knew who she was at the time? You probably would have had the same conversation. Oh, that's it's true. Not like, yeah, that's you know, I don't feel like yeah. you would have been, you know, yeah, we're starstruck gonna, or anything. Yeah, we're just, I mean, maybe you, but you wouldn't have been, yeah, you wouldn't have been weird because, you know, 
Right. We're, we're just making jokes. I know. Yeah. But I, but even with that in mind, I still feel like some parallel version of me would have totally done that. No. Oh, so Pernell, can, Pernell can literally talk to anybody. So I, I think uh, you would have done fine. Oh, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Next guest on the show, former president Barack Obama. So, Mr. Obama, <laughs> tell us more about yourself. Um, I heard you're a big fan of jazz hate. Well... My fellow Americans, we're going to listen to Battle Chotes. <laughs> no, we're not. Get off our show. I love the music. Get off our show, Mr. <laughs> President. <laughs> I can listen to it all day long. <laughs> if I had known that, I don't think you would have been getting any vote. <laughs> all right. Um, actually, Pernell, we're on to your first track of the evening. Okay. Or, or the daytime for whenever people are listening to the show. The funny part, I'm going to point this out, and then it's going to come back at the end of the episode because... I was going to swap a track out the last minute. I was like, oh, wait, this is what funk should sound like. Oh. But uh, I'll play it at the end of the episode, and you can go, well, you should have just played that earlier in the show, Pernell, you goober. But for now, I'm going to stick with the tracks I originally picked. Okay. I'm going to roll with it. I'm really confused. We're, we're, we're listening to music, though, right? We're listening to music. <laughs> okay. We're not going to listen to a diatribe about my favorite energy drinks. Um, so this track comes from a game I played last year and ended up liking quite a bit. And I did not pick this track during the summer wrap-up. And I'm glad I didn't, because now I can play it in this episode, I think. We'll find out if it qualifies. Um, but this comes from the game World's End Club. And it's called Infiltrating the Automobile Factory. And it is composed by Jun Fukuda. It's gotta be Scooby Doo, man. Getting, getting a little... It couldn't have been Snum. Couldn't be freaking was a jaw, Jabber Jaw. Jabber Jaw. Couldn't be Jabber Jaw, could it? <laughs> Had to be Scooby Doo. <laughs> what were some other ones? They were Josie all. Josie and the Pussycats, Cherry uh, Chan and the Chan Clan. Dune Buggy. Uh, amazing, Dune buggy. Ma- amazing Chan and the Chan Clan. It was the Amazing Chan and the Chan Dune Clan. Buggy. I forgot about Dune you Buggy. You know what I did? I confused yep. it with the Cherry, the Ferrar Pan Candies. A great ape. Great. Now he was oh, great. They didn't, they didn't do mysteries. Oh, they didn't though. do mysteries. Oh, okay. no. That oh. was Mr. Peebles. <laughs> um, but now nah, they do mystery solving or anything. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, that was, was like great. The beginning of this track really sounds like you're on a mystery, like like the Scooby Doo gang are yeah. on the case. Well, I mean, you're not far off. But I'll name the track and I'll tell you all the gibble gibble. Um, this comes from the game uh, World's End Club, released on Apple Arcade and Nintendo Switch. Um, it's called Infiltrating the Automobile Factory. It's composed by Jun Fukuda. So, first and foremost, I left it to the experts here, the experts of Stankface, to give me the 411, as it were, because some gangster was dissing my fly girl, and I needed confirmation <laughs> that this was actually even remotely in the realm of funk. Uh, and they yeah, seem to think it was kind so. of them. Oh, yeah. It's, I it mean, I think it's funk. It's like sludge funk. Sludge or something. funk. I don't know. Yeah. That's that sounds like that. my kind of funk. Sludge That's funk. It. I like that. Yeah, there's like a sludge. It metal took me that that yeah. the whole time we were listening for uh, listening to it. I was like, where's the word? 
What is it? <laughs> That's sludge. Sludge. I need some added grime. Yeah, I think it's there. You should, you should stand yep. by your tracks, bro. You should stand oh, by Oh, I'm going to stand by them. Yeah. It's just, I still, I think it's part of the humor. Industrial like, sludge. <laughs> <laughs> like, Pearl is do a lot of Riot Girl and Shoe Gaze yeah, and, like, yeah. Rocktober. Like, it, sometimes when it comes to certain genres, it's like, he knows them. He just doesn't know them. <laughs> but it's time, <laughs> he has to accidentally choose something that fits that mold. Can feel it. He flounds. Yeah, I can feel it. If I'm hearing it, I right. get it. But I'm not going to be just pull it out of a funk hat. And send it to Funk Town on a Funk Train? <laughs> Funko Train? That's what this is about. You have to feel it in your face. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, and and, and, and I do when it... And it's not all necessarily <laughs> funk. It just makes you feel funk. And I do when I right. get the... When the <laughs> all that sound. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That was good. Mm, like the thick stank. There um, you go. Now you're talking music. <laughs> now <Right>. you're talking <laughs> bass. So, like, this track actually is... It's kind of funny. You're like, oh, like, Scooby-Doo it all because... I may have mentioned the premise of this game in a previous episode, but essentially, a bunch of kids are on a bus on a, going on a school field trip. A meteor hits the earth, and the world ends while they're on the bus. And they wake up in an underwater amusement park, and they have to escape from a maniacal, you know, gesture puppet clown thing. Okay. And then they have to <laughs> find their way back to Tokyo by traveling across Japan, because apparently they were blown, like, hundreds of miles away. And they are on this weird adventure where they learn to have magic powers. And oh, so there they are, like they are like like a, a kids' club in the world. At the world, at, at the, the end, end of the world. world. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So like nice. at one point they come to learn there's like machines that are active and doing things like malicious things. Like basically machines are trying to wipe humans out, and uh, some of their friends get kidnapped and taken to this automobile factory. And the few kids that didn't get captured have to sneak into the automobile factory and rescue their friends. And this music is playing over, so it's almost like they're trying to like solve the mystery. Where'd our friends go? We gotta figure out how to get them out. So when you're like Scooby Doo, I'm like, what well, they are technically on a hunt to solve a mystery of their missing friends and how to rescue them. So I give them that. Um, the, but I might derail us further. But how does what does the underground amusement park have to do with the meteor? The hit, oh the, God! Is, the, I, is it I, is it connected or is there they this, two separate things? They, I kid you not, it is all connected. The narrative okay, in this right. game is bonkers. But now I'm hooked. <laughs> <laughs> like it's weird in that like the game at its core is meant to be a game that kids can play. So like it's not going to be like oh man that guy got murdered or anything like mm -hmm. that. No swearing and stuff like that. And all the kids get these like imaginative powers that like, kind of fit in with their personalities. But. It is still a narrative where like we're flipping this over. You thought this, but it was actually this. Wow, what a twist! Um, they do that multiple times. Uh, but in the end, despite me going, oh, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And at one point, all the kids even start to sing. And they're like, hey. but <laughs> it it has that thing. It is where a Hanna Barbera cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's like, you ever watch a kid? Like I know I feel like Matt would have especially have had to hit this had this happen once because he's got the two kids in his house. Like, you watch a kid's show, and you're like, this is, I'm too old for this. Like, not in the sense of, like, I'm too mature, but just, like, my brain isn't registering with what they're trying to use to entertain me here. Mm. But at <laughs> some point, the dumbest smile comes across your face, and you're like, you know, this is kind of working. I like the idea that once I've accepted that this is meant to be for kids or has, like, a kid's appeal to it, I can kind of let the whole, well, this plot point clearly couldn't happen, but the kid was eating candy from the vending machine when the monster came through. He would have clearly seen him, and he would have taken him along with his friends. This is stupid. Like, you don't do that, because you're like, eh, for kids. Kids don't think like that. Kids go, wow, fun adventure. So you're saying once you let that go. Once you let that go, you can just enjoy the adventure for what it is, mm -hmm. and you get that sort of yep. youthful energy, that youthful vibe that just says, it's almost like I'm a kid again, that, enjoying this fun you get story. That youthful glow. That's about right. You, yeah. That's right. Drinking all this monster. The youthful glow of the television <laughs> on your Warm, face. glowy glow. <laughs> Playing World's mm -hmm. End Club at 2 in the morning. Well, actually, you say that. You joke about that, but I think I did beat this at like a 3 in the morning. I, I don't doubt that. <laughs> no, he, he wasn't joking. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead serious. I was, I was dead serious. Drinking off of those energy drinks, you will have a, a, a glow about <laughs> a nuclear glow. Very, very radioactive. Radioactive man. <laughs> All right, so I think we're back around to you, Matt. So what's your next? Are we? What, yeah, what's your next track pick for us? Uh, my next track pick, I you know, I was looking through your uh, old episodes to make sure I didn't um, cross over with the same uh, you know track that's already been played. Even though I kind of already did that to myself <laughs> on two episodes, I think I played the same Splatoon track twice. But you're allowed um, to do that. 
<laughs> yeah, but that's that's mine. So I'm I'm only stepping on my own toes. Um, this is stage one from section Z. It looks like someone else did stage two at some point. Oh wow, that's different. This is stage <laughs> one from section Z on the NES um, by Tamayo Kawamoto. That's right. Yeah, uh, it was Kumi Yamaga and arranged for the NES by uh, Tamaya Kawamoto. And, and and I did listen to the arcade version. I was like, I feel like I played this on the arcade classics, on um on the on the PlayStation Four, the Capcom classics. Yeah, this is weird. this is one of those games where this came. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into it. Yeah. But, but the track is, I like it better on the NES. So let, let's get into it. more of that that little pitch bend <laughs> situation going on there. That was good. You're listening to yeah. Stage 1 from the game Section Z for the Nintendo Entertainment System, composed by Kumi Yamaga and arranged for the NES by Tamayo Kawamoto. Yeah, this has got... it's It does have some kind of, like, it's punchier on the NES. Like, every, like, note is just hits a little bit harder and it makes it kind of funky. So, yeah, I feel like Matt should tell the story, but there's a fun story behind this track. At least as far as we go with it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, my, my story is that this was on uh, on our last episode of Pernell and Matt Play Games. Mm -hmm. um, we did uh, comparing arcade games and their home ports. Oh, that's cool. For, mostly for, yeah. like, older games, including Section Z. And um, as I was editing the episode and listening to this song a billion times, <laughs> I started being like, oh, wait, this is actually really good. Ooh. Hang on, and especially when it breaks down towards the end and does the bridge to, like to come back around to the to to the loop. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> and like this really track, up. and it's interesting because like at the time of the episode, I didn't even know there was an arcade version to, to this game. I only know about the NES game, so we went and played them both, and I'm like, oh my god, the NES version improved on this in every way, <laughs> like every yeah. way possible. Of the geek gameplay itself, the gameplay, yeah. the music is just a better game on the NES. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. like, especially around this era where arcade, like, the way, anyway, the way it looked and the way it sounded in the arcade was vastly different from what they could do at home. I felt like they were adding more things to to make the games maybe different or maybe even make them more of a larger home experience rather than they just They definitely were. Like, remember, uh, Bionic Commando was such a different game. In the arcade, right. it is like an impossible. That was another beast. one we did on that episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. oh my god, it's so hard. You went through all the Capcoms, didn't you? <laughs> we were knocking them mostly down. Capcom, yeah. yeah Commando, now, Bionic Commando. Another game that we didn't do on an episode, but we probably could have totally like Trojan, uh, Rygar. Right. And oh yeah, I feel like both of those were better on the NES than the arcade too. A lot of early NES Capcom games, and I, I mentioned this in the episode. Um, they uh, apparently. For the home version, since back then, if you didn't like the game, you could just bring it back to Sears or whatever and get your money back. So they wanted to make sure that 
you know, it wasn't just the quarter munching, you know, like you just lose all the time kind of thing. Like they wanted to add, you know, a little bit more, you know, to keep you interested. That's why the home versions of a lot of early Capcom games are so different and have even like Commando is basically the same game, but then there's like secret, you know, tunnels and secret, you know, like uh, lots of secret a, things. We gotta put a game in here. <laughs> right, exactly. I, you know, but back then it, that was the game. Yeah, or in the arcade, it used to be like a score, a score attack, you know, where it's just like, it's just this one right. thing, you're going to play it, we're going to kill you after level three, because it's going to make be impossibly hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that song is in my head. I think there's still, like, a thing for that. Like, I still love playing, like, shooters and, like, bullet hell games, and they're still making them, and those are definitely, like, in the arcade, you know, quarter munchers, and at home, it's still that, the same way. They're, but the thing they're not adding anything, anything else to it. But. but but the thing about those is a little different. Like, in a lot of arcade games back then, it was like, they take, like, say, Turtles, right? Like, like the old beat em up. They would give the bosses invincibility frames so that they mm. pretty much couldn't get hit until they hit you. Like, they had unfair, cheap tricks that, short of, like, learning how to, like, glitch the system in some ways, you're gonna take damage and die, which is why anybody that tells me they got a 1cc in, like, Turtles... I'm like, that's insane. But like bullet hell games, they're like kind of how music games became, where originally popping music and beat me was oh, specifically, I think he's popping because that was like a really good example. Popping music was meant to be played with your friends, two to four people playing on the same cabinet. And then people said, nah, I can get better than that. So they started playing and beating the songs by themselves. Songs that were meant to be played with multiple people. Uh, so they just had to make uh, it harder. And so you're saying kept... like the bullet hell was like the escalation, like the arms race of, of like shoot 'em ups. Yeah. yeah. Like I feel like bullet hells in themselves that you compare those to things like Gradius and stuff. Like when people started one CC and Gradius, they're like, what's the next level? A, a game where the bullets are just all over the place. Yeah, and that's kind of where cave um, as, as a shoot 'em up developer kind of came out of they, they realized that there was like a niche market for people who wanted like more intense like games with like maybe only six or seven stages but with like really really intense gameplay and really focusing on um, uh, making it more making it more fair I'm using air quotes for the player and making like the bullets in the uh, the player much easier to see and I gotta tell you like in the last few years specifically I've been getting more into those kinds of games and I realized they have a similar impact different but similar than like how I get from like playing really hard like Dark Souls type games where you get I guess in the case of bullet hells it's the bullet zen mode but yeah. you're playing them and the stuff starts happening and then you kind of like have this out of body experience where something you're bobbing and you're weaving you're making all the right moves and you're not dead yet <sighs> despite the fact that you really should be and then the you moment you flow state yes you hit flow and then the moment you realize you're in flow that's when you die yeah <laughs> it's when you're meditating and you start to realize, hey, I'm actually meditating. It's when you start to be like, wait, I'm thinking again. Like, I think oh, the last no. time I was playing, I was playing um, two shooters. This one game where, like, you're basically like a barbecue chef fighting pork, a pork army, which was really weird. And then another Amazing. game called Akai Katana, where you are flying through space or flying through, like, these weird, like, 1960s military scenes with a possessed sword fighting, like, these other superpower possessed people. But in the middle of the boss fights, they summon these, like, large military vehicles from portals to start shooting missiles at you. And this one boss fight, the character summons two submarines out of nowhere and bullets start <laughs> flying. And I was doing the bob and weave shuffle. My friend was watching. He was like, oh my god, how are you not dead? I was like, I don't know. And then immediately dead. And I died. The moment <laughs> he called me out on it. It was amazing, though. Just amazing. That's what I love about those games. They're fair and unfair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so my next track, I you know I, I, have a, I have a bunch picked. Um... I'm going to pick a shooter. This is the sequel to Soul Dees for the um, Sega Soul Mega Drive. This is Soul Feast <laughs> for the Sega Mega CD, composed by Motoi Sakuraba and Ryota Fiora. We're going to listen to the music from Stage 2.
listening to the music from Stage 2 from the game Soul Feast. F-E-A-C-E from uh, Ryota Fiora and Matoya Sakuraba for the Sega Mega CD. And we were just talking about Dark Souls. We just yeah. mentioned Dark Souls anyway. That's right. And that was also Matoya Sakuraba. This is classic Sakuraba. Um, it's almost <laughs> like it's it's a it's a really energetic, just funked up anime <laughs> soundtrack of a, of a song. I don't. Know, it's got like a maybe not anime. It's like a, a classic '80s or classic '90s. Um, you know, Ultraman style. I'm imagining like a Sentai Force. I'm vibe. laughing hard at this because I swear to, I'm not even making this up. On uh, SML last night, I had this exact same problem. Where I was like, it's like Power Rangers, yeah, but it's not Sentai. <laughs> it's like Tokusatsu or whatever the word is. But I it, couldn't remember. But, but it's got a little bit of that feeling of, of like, yeah, of, of like one of those shows of, of the five superheroes. Transform! Yeah, and they're all working together. <laughs> like, do you maybe you know, Matt? Like, like it's like it's not Sentai. In this case, oh, it, might, I don't it might be, yeah. but it's like, it's like tokusatsu or toka something where it's like it's like what's live like, action. Yeah, yeah what's the guy? Up. The guy riding the motorcycle, Majin Rider. Yeah, or, 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 or now I'm thinking Mugen Rider, freaking One Punch Man ruined that <laughs> for One me. Punch. <laughs> yeah, he ruined <laughs> it. He's based off of an actual thing. I'm going to remember. It. You'll see. But yeah, but, but common yeah. common writer. Common writer. Common there writer. I said Majin Rider, didn't I? That's Majin Buu, that's what I was thinking of from, like, from Dragon Ball. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it's got that feeling to it. But then, like, once right before the track loops over, there's, like, this breakdown that's just like, wait a minute, See, what's going yeah, on I here? Just that's why we're all working together here. As a trifecta here, we cover each other's weaknesses. That's right. <laughs> you're like Sentai. I'm like, spots. no, it's Tokusatsu. He goes, come So you're water type, but over here I'm fire type. And over there, he's electro type. No, he's grass type. <laughs> grass. We got to get you a Pokemon <laughs> cart, Rob. I, I, like, starters. I like. I thought you were just joking. Yeah, he's grass type, and I was like, "Yep, I'm grass." Game Fan Forty Four is out there <laughs> right now. I'm just thinking of you know, like red and blue. blue. That's what. What's that's that? what the originals were, right? Oh, okay. I don't know. And the, then Pokemon no, Yellow came out and ruined the setup. Right. There, there was there were a lot of elements in, in uh, the one Pokemon game that I played. Was blue. yellow? <laughs> was it blue? No, blue. Oh, oh yeah. I played red. I, I didn't even finish that. That's um. We we that's why we're rivals now. <laughs> Smell you later. And yet, my daughter has played literally every game oh. that they've made, to, uh, every version to completion, because she's obsessed with it. So, yeah, and that's how I earned my place in their household. It's like, I'm so a, I, I learn master. about it from her. That's fine. Like, did you know Mr. Purnell is a master of the steel type element? Like, he is. Like, yeah, right. kid. I <laughs> I have all these badges. <laughs> I gotta say about this track, something about it, it has that that essence of early mid nineties red book audio, like yeah. you know, new new C like C D ROM games, multimedia. It has that like um mm -hmm. that the you know, echoey synth, like <laughs> just everything synth, everything echo. Yeah, like and, a reverb. And on reverb that. and yeah. yeah. <laughs> well it is, it and is I love it. like that because it's it's so like the, the the Mega CD was right on the heels of the Mega Drive, you know. Yep. Um, the PlayStation hasn't really been out yet. Um, every, the idea these composers are now given like, hey, you have all this data to work with. You can actually have right. recorded music still at a lower bit rate or whatever the right book I don't know format was, but yeah. it's going to be actual <laughs> instruments rather than just you're using the the, the console as it was an amazing format. That yeah. was the synths format. that you're using to to create the music. And then cha change it to whatever right. you know the chip needs. Just use the synths, you know. To, just to, use it on your yeah. own. Yeah. So I th I don't right. know. Maybe it was the recording quality, or maybe this was just the style style at the time. Yeah. But like, um, <laughs> it does have a sound to it. You're absolutely right. And you just yeah, put an onion on the synthesizer. Unique flavor to it. I, I've really like for not just for this episode, but just in general, I've really fallen into like researching um, Mega CD and Sega CD music because there's some like Popful Mail. Oh, yeah, and man. Some of, there's a yep. lot of like yep. great, great soundtracks on, on that system. Can I stand by my heartfelt belief years and years later that I feel like the Red Book audio era was probably my favorite mm. game VGM mm. audio era. Like I was falling in love with like Turbo CD and Sega CD OSTs. It was ridiculous. There's a couple of games that came out, uh, Purnell might remember, uh, early on, like when the, the when the 360 had Xbox Live indie game, you know, oh, I love that or channel. whatever. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Um, there was someone, Magical Time Bean, who made... Oh, Escape Goat! Uh, Escape Goat, but he also made the Soul Caster game. I remember Soul Caster. 
Right, that had music exactly like this. It felt exactly like oh. this, you know, like reverby synth, you know, like early CD quality. I didn't know you he know, made that. So we we had yes. him on the show ages ago. Oh, really? Um, nice. Really great guy, and um, that is not what I expected. I saw. I just searched up Soulcaster, <laughs> expecting to find a game. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, um, uh, Escape Good, The music of Escape Good really captured that that feeling of me of kind of like 90s like demo scene style music so yeah if soulcaster really kind of gets into this this mode of things i don't know he's just got a great if he's also that, on scene like now. it might not like it might yeah. not great it, musical it, sensibility it, i'm not sure now i'm starting yeah. to wonder maybe it was maybe it wasn't but all i do know is i remember the game i remember what matt's talking about i remember the Ooh, ost being yeah, pretty that. slick um honestly i do, I, lo- I miss that era of honestly and i'll do honesty of the early Xbox indie ending. game yes like times that, yeah because uh, people like to kind of like just joke about it, but people used to say that if you were on that indie segment of the Xbox marketplace, your games would generally get ignored, which I disagree with personally. I just knew where to look yeah. for them is more specific. Yeah, right? there was a lot of like not great stuff, but then there's a lot of like really good True. niche stuff. Like there were some good shooters yeah. on there too. Yeah, and it was fun yep. to go through there and see here's what these guys are crafting and putting together, but now the trade off of what you got on the Switch right now, which Put this out there. Switch is probably my favorite console, probably in the top three ever. Uh, but with that said, its online marketplace is a freaking wild west of stank trash and yep. fantastic games, just depending on where <laughs> you look. And they're all homogenized together in one yeah, poorly organized space. And that's what you would have gotten if Xbox didn't do what it did when it said, here's some games to go here. And here are the games that go here. Like, I want to know what I'm looking in that for that stuff, you know? And because, I mean, you can vouch. I mean, people can vouch for me on this. Like, I found some of my favorite games in that way. Bot Bites on the Switch even. It was like, I love that game. Totally would have been in the indie section of Xbox Live Marketplace. Without a doubt. But it's so good. Yep. Um, yeah, well, having... So, so then, I mean, I, I think now having all of these online marketplaces kind of like, again, homogenized, all thrown together... You can have like these these markets for these these niche titles, these more indie style games, make it into a higher status. Yeah, but the problem is they don't organize it well. So that's that, that, that's that's the issue. And so I think it's now we're relying on word of mouth and we're relying on right. game reviews and websites and things like that. And who knows who's reading what? I mean, I don't know what's hip nowadays. So I don't know. I'm just I just listen <laughs> and to you. And even developers have to really uh, bust their uh, their humps to to um you know market themselves yeah they have to be developer and marketer and you know mm-hmm. if, if they want to make any and, and money in the case back. of um uh, we talk about magical time being like that guy does everything from music to game to right. art to all that stuff and so a lot of those people who are really focused on doing that really really well like they're you know they're, they're probably not as great <laughs> doing the marketing either you know there's like all We're these like no i wouldn't be I know I wouldn't be either. You know, I, I focus all my time on one thing. I, socially, it would be really difficult for me to do that kind of stuff. I, I, I haven't to, to to cultivate a really strong online presence. You have to be on it every day. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, in some weird ways, that's partially where like this came up in the past before. But you said before, like, why do you keep doing all these weird reviews? When you should be playing that game you paid full price for five months ago. Oh, I never said that. Elton Ring for never, me. No, I never uh, said that, but I was thinking it. Yeah, you and, said and, you, you totally said it at least. I'm sure I did. I'm, but like that's partly why because I've come across more than a few instances where it's like you want to try this game. And I'm like, I don't really want to play that. I got this other game I want to play. But then I end up booting it up for the person that review. I'm like, holy crap! Yeah, no one's going to be talking about this, but this game is really good. Exactly. And then people are going to keep doing that, and you're going to be like, well, I got this game I paid for, but then someone gives you this thing, and you're like. But what if it's that awesome game? What if it's another awesome game that like no one's talking about? You know mm-hmm. that I could be missing out on. But with that said, sometimes they're stinkers. Gilson B. Pontus. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna mention them on two shows now. His games are terrible. <laughs> Just pointing that out. Uh, All right, we're good. we're on to your your track. I think. Yeah, we're on to your last track for now. All right. So this this track is not from a stinker, but at the same time. You might call yourself listening to this and going, "There's no funk in this at all." You but- may find yourself. Ask him what you like to listen to, son. And you may ask yourself, 
Did you own a PlayStation 1 growing up? Oh. And the game we played was Parappa the Rap. And the track is called what? Prince We Swallows Rap. And is composed by Masaya Masura with vocals by Leaky Don and Dread Fox. There you go. In the flea market so early I've been working here since my mama was a baby Just because the rhythm is slow That don't mean that you can't flow In the rain or in the snow In the rain or in the snow Got the, got the funky flow Got the, got the funky flow In the rain or in the snow In the rain or in the snow Got the, got the funky flow Got the, got the funky flow All you ever need is to be nice and friendly All you ever need is to be nice and friendly you ever need is to be nice and friendly All you ever need is to be nice and friendly Remember, strike it rich, the key is low Save everybody from way up above I can sell a bottle cap like this I will try to sell a cap like this I can sell a bottle cap like this I will try to sell a cap like this I'll never dream it would be like this I'm the number one ruler of the seven seas this skunk over here will bring you luck The skunk over here will bring you luck The bump over here comes with the truck The bump over here comes with the truck Oh yes, I had a lot, a lot of fun I meet a lot of bucks and now I'm on the run In the rain or in the snow In the rain or in the snow Got the, got the funky flow Got the, got the funky flow In the rain or in the snow In the rain or in the snow Got the funky, funky flow Everything, everything. I have never sold everything, everything. You have never sold everything, everything. You have never sold everything, everything. Money, money, money is all you need. 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 <laughs> your father gonna be very proud of you. Let me know if you have another flea market. I will help you. Oh, you will help me. <laughs> you got that right, teacher. Thanks a lot. Welcome back. You are listening to Prince Flea Swallows Rap from the game Parappa the Rapper on the PlayStation 1, composed by Masaya Matsura, with vocals by Leaky Don as the voice for Prince Flea Swallow and Dread Fox as the voice of Parappa. Uh, for those who didn't grow up in the era when this game came out, this thing was a phenomenon. Uh... Parappa the Rapper was, in my opinion, in my knowledge, I could be wrong, someone can correct me, this was the first music game to hit the market. Closest probably being Vib Ribbon, but I'm pretty sure that came after Parappa. I think so. Um, and it didn't even come into the state, so whoop a doo uh, So I always chuckled at the idea that Parappa was being, basically much becoming this great rapper when the teachers were giving him these lines he just pretty much repeated them but i guess when he laid on the table he was learning the flow from them like he had to repeat what they were saying to pick up here's how you say things quickly and get the words out and then when he got to the end of the, um, the final song he was singing his own lines so maybe that was the idea behind that because if they were actually his teachers he wouldn't be going up on stage battling them he's learning from them so and i think it's funny we were both talking earlier and Matt was like, yeah, yeah, I can see this too. Like the, the how the toilet song was just so freaking good. Uh, it's just such an odd premise for anything. Like you gotta, <laughs> like, do you remember the do you remember the toilet song, right, Matt? I don't think I got that far. Oh yeah, so it was level. Oh, that was level okay. five. That was level right, five. So so okay. Parappa, he's gonna go on a date with his his um, sunflower girlfriend. And Sunny fun. Sunny fun. Sure. He's got to make make a cake, right? Yeah, he makes the cake with. He's chick got with he's got to drive to her, so he's got to get, get his driving test, driver's mm -hmm. driver's license. Um, he wants to buy her something nice, right? So he goes to the flea market. Yes. Um, all this happens, and then finally, it was a fifth stage five. Mm -hmm. um, he needs to use the bathroom. 
He's, he's, on, so- he's on the date, and the cake <laughs> makes him sick. <laughs> okay. So he has to use the bathroom real quickly, and he runs to the the nearby bathroom stall. And for whatever reason, in this unfortunate coincidence, the people in line are the four people who taught him how to rap. Yeah, all four <laughs> masters of the first four stages are in line, and you have to rap battle them to get to the toilet. To get past them. That's great. And it's so it's good. It's pretty great. And I think after that, it's the final stage. But uh, so I, when I think of the game, all I remember is that because it's just like it happened, and you're like, that's fantastic. Yeah, because like everything you've learned up to that point, all the different like button combinations, and again, the, mainly the rhythms, um, is is what you learn, and then you essentially have to wrap back to them in those rhythms. Last toilet blew me up. I already sold it. <laughs> um, and it was stage four. Um, was the first. This this is the uh, the first stage that really got me hung up on this game because all the other stages, all the other stages up to this point, were like, you know, you're kind of just very casually pressing left and then up and then L and then R and this one is like it's like one button like 15 times in a row because his flow is a lot bit of a longer stretch over the that shorter um, the slower slower sound but then you have to come back later to get those cool rankings at which point you kind of have to just be like like M I X the flower to the boat M I X the flower it had a weird <laughs> it did have a weird scoring system that um, I never I don't know if I really went back through and tried to exploit it because this didn't sound right to me. But. That's why I think I think that's one thing I did like prefer about um Jammer Lamy yeah, and the comparison was like yeah. Oh it mattered. But I mean, it was like you know, could, the flow was in like guitar sound, so it sounded better right. to it make didn't, it. It didn't matter that you were just mashing on the buttons as you played the game because it wasn't words that you were saying, it was guitar notes. Yeah. So you could just jam on a on a, on a chord and it was it sounded all right. But, yeah. We have a lot of <laughs> shared history with this game. Clearly. So good. <laughs> See, that- I tried to go back and play it on on you know I got the little PlayStation Classic thing. Oh, it's on the uh, was it on there? I think so. Um, or maybe I put it on there. That's, that's also <laughs> possible. <laughs> but, uh, I was gonna say um, you probably did a little something something to that. Thing. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's probably what it was. Um, but like the uh, the HDMI, you know, and like yeah, the uh, yeah. there's like a just enough lag in. in you know, between hitting the button and seeing what's on screen, that I just like couldn't get past the first level because it was like, nope. Honestly, <laughs> playing the original, no, you're wrong. The original still had a lot of lag to it, and so you're kind of playing. Even like the original DDR games were like that too, where you know, you don't really think about it because there weren't games like that at the time. But like you go back and right. try to play them again, you're like, oh my god, like you you didn't learn the rhythm of the song, you learned the rhythm of the game and then of the song. <laughs> Right, but, yeah. but like I swear, I mean honestly, those games are pretty much why I still have a CRT in the office, just because I sure. want to be able to sit down and play that kind of stuff. And, you can't, and also, and, first like the gun game, Carnival Gun Games, uh, too. That's true. And, yep. you, and you can't move it out now. Yeah. And, and, well, As we get older, and you, and you saw that CRT, it's going to stay there forever. I see. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I think I got the I think I got that CRT during the pandemic. My friend was getting rid oh, of it, all right. and I went over and grabbed it from his house. My and brother at home. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I got a different one after that. So I got, oh, okay. I, yeah, had, I had, a, I had a smaller one. Then I got the one from his brother, and then I got this one. And if I remember, I, had to ret- I returned the one up there, or something like that. I did something with that, take okay. it back or something, because it was like, it was one of those Sony Trinitrons or something like that. And I was like, you're giving this away. I'm like, yeah, come get that. Oh, no, Sony Wega. It was a Wega. Um, Sony oh, Wega. Okay. Those were, those were. The, I remember that was like a really popular thing for gamers so it was yeah yeah and he just was like the hey, thing to get exactly so he was like you want it? i was like yeah i want it and i went and got it and right. lugged up the stairs and my back was like i hate you i was like i hate you too let's get this done and it was over. <laughs> you know? i love how we got two episodes in a row involving stories of lugging crts up television up, yeah, up staircases yeah yeah our last guest was um had had some history with pulling crts out of you know cars and lifting them upstairs the things we yeah. do for retro games yeah, work out it is it's tough Actually, I remember um, it was your your bachelor party playing Halo. Uh, we had like yeah, like six we had TVs a, or eight TVs. A bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all CRT TVs, all stuffed into the living room of the the second floor apartment that <laughs> that we were in at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I played much Halo because we had drank a lot before. Yes, we did. I think I napped through <laughs> a lot of that one. I played. I did not play well. Not that I ever played well, played Halo very well anyway, but yep, I mean, that was a, probably the best I've ever done in Halo, to be perfect. That, that is, <laughs> yeah, pre, all the pros were drunk. Pre-internet gaming, that is a an experience. The only way yeah. that you could experience a game like that. Yeah. There, was, there was something to be said about though, because unlike in the current era, like we would sit there and play, and when somebody on two TVs over messed up and you shot, you like, ah! Like you reach over to, he's like, "Got you!" 
Like, yeah, just... it, it, it hits different when, when they're in the same room. Oh, yeah, yeah. it really does. Yeah, not, not on a microphone. Like when they're over there, and you're like, ha ah. Right. Hey, you you can throw something at them. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll spill drinks all over the floor. That's the real danger. It's not, it's not racial slurs. It's like it's a, it's a can of Coke <laughs> flying across the room. <laughs> right. I do jiggly miss those airs like that and the Mario parties. And yeah. Like, jeez. But I'm trying to remember, was it, it wasn't Dreamcast, was that also tried to do like a linking of systems? Was there any games that did it for that? I want to say it. I could be wrong. Right? Maybe, we're, maybe I'm just remem- misremembering the whole Phantasy Star bit and there wasn't a game that linked consoles together. Either. I was thinking like there was a, a link on the PlayStation f- to play That's Doom, luck. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. You, could, yeah. you, could, you could do I that so. anyway. I think I remember doing that one point. Being like, oh, that was awesome. We got a death match going. Then being like... Can't we just play Quake on our computers right now? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I, was, I guess I kind of could have been like X-Play. Like if people were using X-Plays mm. in the same room, connecting the same network, <laughs> that would do it. Yeah. Last time I did something like that was only a couple of years ago playing um, Sea of Thieves. And you know, like my nephew and I think Jack and maybe some other someone. I don't know. A, a couple of people would come over, bring like a monitor or something, and hook up their Xbox, and then we'd all be pirates together in the same <laughs> oh, room, all man. sailing on the same ship, and we're all like doing different parts oh, of you I know, love the that. ship. And it was it was cool because then you could like one person could have the map up, and you could just look over at their screen and be like, oh, okay, I know where I'm going. <laughs> and, you know, oh, it was, my- uh, a lot of fun. Like, yeah, there's, there's really is something to be said about just everybody collectively lugging their equipment over. I think Rock Band yeah. was another period for that. Even though it was all one TV, yeah, there was. was something to be said about bringing all your band equipment, quote unquote, your band equipment to the house. We used to go <laughs> we um, play drums. When we stuff. visited our friend Mike down in around DC area, we would always drive down to play like Guitar Hero or Rock Band. And so in the back of the car was our all of our our toy <laughs> guitars so we could play yep. a rock band. I'd do it in a heartbeat again, too. If it weren't for the fact that Rock Band swore soul for a friggin' mental on the internet, I'd still have it. I don't think I have the patience anymore to learn to play well. Oh, you don't learn. It just happens. <laughs> on it the guitar happens. because it hurts so bad. The better I got, the more painful it was, and I just don't think I want to go back to that. Oh, man. I, I, think, I, I think my Guitar Hero days are over. I mean, my, there's, a whole, uh, there's a whole scene of, like, aftermarket, not aftermarket, or, like, you know, like, hacked guitar hero games of, of yeah people playing online for like insane yeah insanely fast stuff like i've never and they're still they're playing it like with the one hand i'll oh, see what that's the thing i'm never doing that i'm sticking with cherub rock frets on fire is that what it's called frets on fire yeah on, yeah 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 like i'll stick with my cherub rock and my what was that song i like to go the here i am it was like a freaking like indie song that harmonics put on the game that i was obsessed with i'm gonna right. look it up you'll see I mean, that's how i discovered um, um a few Couple bands was through, was through Guitar Hero. Yeah. Freeze Pop better be one of them. Well, yeah. Well, we knew about Freeze Pop before. I think I knew about Freeze oh, Pop. Guitar- before. Oh, sorry. Right. Frequency. Frequency was where we learned about Freeze Pop. Mm-hmm. No, what was the um, uh, um, um, uh, Panic Switch? They had that song called Panic Switch. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Somebody, please. Oh, I almost, I almost <laughs> had it. Panic switch. Right, we can't remember. <laughs> it's, it's the word I, in it. I forget. The Boom. Silver Sun pickups. Got it. Silver Sun pickups. That's what. It is. Yeah, I remember. See, I heard one of their songs, and I was like, "Oh, I want to hear um, Silver Sun pickups." And then they had a whole pack of music, and so I downloaded the pack, and yeah. I was like, "I've never heard these songs before." How are they this good? And I did not know about them. Actually, <laughs> speaking of rock band, this will be a fun bit of trivia. Kind of ties into like an earlier topic that we talked about. So. On SML, the guy that hosts it that I'm friends with, Joe, I don't know how he's been doing this, and he's been he's stuck with it. He has, with the exception of like three or four tracks that were like promo, he has every single DLC song that was ever put into Rock Band. Oh my Not, god, I thought I had a problem. And he has I have like 600 songs or something, but. Yeah, thousands of songs. I think he says like to over two thousand songs in the game, and his yeah. hard drive freaking like has a heart attack when it loads the game up. Now. Yeah, <laughs> Spotify. Really- That's like my step mania when I play DDR. It's like I don't know. I think it's like six or seven thousand tracks at this point. And it's just like, like I don't even know how you browse that many tracks. That's it's like at that point you just come kind of like to spin a wheel and hope it would just play wherever it lands on, because <laughs> you don't yeah. know what you're looking for. Oh wow, too much music. Yeah, it is like Spotify. Spotify on Garage. Yeah. Rock band. Rather. Rock band. Like, yeah. imagine. See, this is what we need in this world. Imagine Spotify. <laughs> like you just said, Spotify rock band. 
And any track just had like this random configuration of notes that would be available for the guitar. And you would just play your Spotify library. Like, I paid for that monthly. Because it's like a jam session in your house. Like, you're jamming out to your music that you oh, love. So I read about the, um, and then we got to get into the next part of the show, but <laughs> I read about the, uh, the technology behind uh, Guitar Hero. And the idea was, was that when you're playing the game, it's, it feels like when you hit the note, it's playing the note along with you, right? So you think that every single note that comes across, there's a, it, it programmed a sound to it, but they didn't. Um, every time you hit a note, it just lets the track continue to play. It's when you miss a yeah. note that they actually play something. Huh. So it's actually the other yep. way around. So I'm like, oh, this is just the song actually playing. Just and missing it, it mutes one part of the track. That's why it sounds like yeah. you're playing perfectly every time. But if you play, now on the other side of things, uh, Beat Mania. Um, Beat Mania is a five key or seven key game where when you press the button, it actually plays the sound. And so you have to be absolutely perfect. Otherwise, the song sounds completely off rhythm, completely off key. And that does make sense, too, because if you play Beat Manny or Papa music, yeah, and like you get to the end of a song, for example, where it's like it's done the song, but it hasn't killed the actual sound effects yet, you can just start hitting random keys yeah, and you'll hear the key out. sounds. And like, like, like one person will play it, and it's like, okay, you get like 80% pretty good, and it sounded like noise. However, if you listen to the actual song online, it's like, oh, there's the whole song. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to sound. Okay, that's just something interesting I learned. We are now getting into the part of the show that we call the bonus round. Time to start the bonus round. In the rain or in the round. <laughs> <laughs> got the, got the, uh oh. All right, the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements based on our theme. And sometimes we play additional tracks on our theme. Sometimes we play mainly, I like to pick the vocal tracks during our theme. Matt, you found something a little interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I will, uh, if we if we can refer back to the episode that I was on in 2016. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Was that, was that, uh, I was, was on an episode. 2016? Yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> episode 5 8. All right. Wow. Chiptune Spectacular. Um, I found this, uh, I randomly stumbled upon this artist called, uh, now I have to look at it again. Protodome. Protodome. Yeah, Protodome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they made a, an album back then called chip funk where it was like funky jams made with, uh, like a very like Queso. rigidly limited, like, you know, I only have this synthesizer and I'm going to make you know, this music with this synth this synthesizer. Um, and apparently I, as, as I was researching for this episode, um, I found that, that album, I was like, Oh, maybe I'll do one from this album. Oh, I already did that. Okay. Oh wait, he has a new album <laughs> that came out like last year called super chip funk. Um, which, uh, 16 bit, funk. he's a little bit less rigid on, on his, his, yeah. uh, you know, his I'll, stuff, yeah. but it's still yeah. pretty chippy. Yeah, I was reading about that because uh, I remember so, when you played it on the last episode ages ago, ages ago now, um, yeah. <laughs> I remember downloading the whole album and like putting it in my car and being like, this is incredible stuff. Really, really good. Like right. really good jazz, really good funk, but like again, with a limited sound palette. Right. Um, this one is, uh, let me see. Oh, it's uh, Moonbound by Protodome from the album Super Chip Funk. Thank you. 
That was really good. Wow. That was a Moonbound <laughs> SNES from I... Super Chip Funk by Protodome. Original piece using um, Super yes. Nintendo uh, sound chip. I fell out of my seat. <laughs> we yeah, sorry, just... it's not a cover or, or anything. No, it's no, just, it doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be. An original piece. Yeah. If anything, honestly, I've been wanting to look more into like these artists who compose original music with the sound chips because I... Honestly, just want to hear new stuff. Just new stuff. That hits those mm-hmm. notes, you know. But I'm drowning in the music. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, though. That's not a problem. Like, living in a world right. where music is in abundance yeah. is a beautiful thing. Yeah, generally not the focus of our show, but we could, I think, doing a um, like a demo scene or like that kind of style. Mm-hmm. Is that what this would be considered? Uh, a demo scene adjacent, I think. Because yeah. there's definitely less constraints on this. But demo scene is really like... It's like what uh, Michael Bridgewater does, where he's like composing new music, but on, on, on Commodore, but like on his original Commodore sixty four. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, because like and I guess it's because he's essentially they would write demos, and that's what. That's but what it's okay. Has to he's fit in five K. He's a real doctor. What's he's up? a real doctor. It has to like fit into like five K of memory. Or something, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Well, it's arbitrary yeah. depending on what whatever they're right. working on, right? Um, all right. So my track is another Mega CD track. I picked this one because it has vocals in it, and it's rad. Is it from Powerful Man? Nice. It's from A Rank Thunder Tanjohin. The what? Tanjohin. <laughs> uh, A Rank Thunder Tanjohin. It is um, a Japanese adventure game. Um, it looks very futuristic. I don't know what's going on. It's all in Japanese. Uh, but this is the, uh, I believe it's the theme. It's called Fight! Exclamation point. Composed by Shinobu Ogawa with vocals by Masato Shimon. うまく
こすさんだ奴らの山をうじくだけさんださんだ先行エラクさんだ That was Fight from A Rank Thunder Tanjohan for the mega CD composed by Shinobu Ogawa, vocals by Masatu Shimon. Masatu Shimon! Thunder! Powerful. <laughs> Thunder just, cool. It's just like, it, at first I listened to it and I'm like, yeah, okay, cool, early 90s or late 80s anime theme, but like it hits these like these chords, like it's very, I don't know, Flock of Seagulls or Depeche Mode. Um, in between an eighties synth, yeah, yeah, but it's like yeah. it's like everything is super like major chord. You know, you got this guy screaming like it sounds like anime fight like moves, <laughs> and then suddenly it gets into this kind of minor chord, and I'm like, oh, okay, getting that giant robot getting kind of sexy on me. <laughs> it's that love theme to giant robot battle. Like I still look back like hearing music like that from anime for the first time. And at first, wondering why I was listening to it because like I don't understand what these guys are saying. This makes no sense. And then lie. one day, it just like I never I, like the, maybe the first like month of watching anime, I would fast forward the openings, and then one day I just settled into it, and I realized it's just another instrument, and it sounds amazing. Like I don't have mm-hmm. to understand what they're you saying. Mean the voice, the voice is good. another good. Yeah, the voices yeah, yeah. are another instrument, and they sound great. So next thing you know, I'm also going, Sanda Takuru. What did he say? He has no idea, but it's okay. We can look it up. It's probably like, you know, Sega Mega CDs, the best. Sega <laughs> Mega CD, buy another one for your Se- family. Sega Sakuru. Please. Sega ta Sachuru. <laughs> All right, Pranal, what's your uh, track for us for this bonus round? All right, so it's time to pull that, that little rabbit out of our hat from earlier in the episode because oh. this track is done by the One Ups. Uh, oh, hey. Oh. Yeah. Oh, ho. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Bring up that door, <laughs> door of the Explorer Whoa. vibes going on here. <laughs> so this comes from the game uh, Castlevania Three. This is pretty much a cover of the Stage One theme, which I love, so I had to go to it. Mm. Um, the track title is called Curse of the Funk, and it is composed by the One Ups.
That password. <laughs> Cross holy water. X <laughs> holy water. That always made it harder on the uh, when you're trying to write down because like, you can remember like letters and numbers when you're a kid, but then you're right. like, okay, I have to draw the holy water. Oh, I wasn't drawing squat. I had like H H W and A. Oh man. All right, that was the one ups, right? Yes, sir. Ooh, that's what I wanted <laughs> from the <laughs> other one. That's the that that fuzzy, dirty bass sound uh, is what I was missing from their other cover, and they have completely redeemed themselves. Yeah. And thank you again to the one ups. I love the, that uh, "Curse of the Funk" by the one ups. Um, that was the uh, the track is "This Place Is Dead Anyway" from Castlevania Three. I just like the fact that uh, this track, when it started playing, Matt flat out just made that comment. I was like, it's the one-up's redemption arc. It's played through. That's what it is. It's That's it right there. That's what I needed. <laughs> I just love how it just perfectly came together because I picked this track days ago. <laughs> and I, I picked that's it up great. while I was at work, and I listened to it like five times in a row because I was I loved it. I loved it so much. Yeah, it's uh, real good. Yes. And they chilled again. That's like that's like my favorite track alongside like Mad Forest and Aquarius from uh, Castlevania oh, 3. Aquarius is like mm. one of my it's uh, that's probably my favorite favorite track from that game. Um it's just I think we played that game actually on uh, Rip, Matt, Pernod and Matt play games as well and yes, I we watched did. that one. I did. I do remember that one. It was so good. I was like this is the episode we played the like, version that had the Japanese version that has the, the better music. Yes. And I just remember the whole time I was like, I can't wait to get to Aquarius. That's where I was when all the chips, when all the chips are going to be down when the Aquarius level kicks in. And sure enough, oh, that level gave us a run for our money. <laughs> yep, it's not the birds anymore. Now it's the bats. <laughs> That's right. Oof. Uh, so for more information on our bonus round part of our show, you can go to rhythmandpixels.com. Well, we'll have links to the artists, band camps, and sound clouds, and everywhere where you can find the music, download the music, buy the music, stream the music, and support these amazing artists. Thank you for joining us on episode 32-10 of Rhythm and Pixels. Um, this is our, our Stank Face Jams Part 2 with Matt. Stank Bunker. Mm-hmm. From, from Purnell and Matt Play Games. Matt. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> from that thing that I make once a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's all about the maybe fun. More, maybe more this year. But yeah, we should, because I'll be honest, it's all about the fun, really. It's it's yeah. I mean, it's a, you can try doing Twitch, then there's there's no editing. You just do it. I uh, yeah, I've thought about that. Maybe maybe we should do that. But don't you have to be live when you do it on Twitch? That's why there's no editing. Which don't get me wrong, I'm fine <laughs> with being live. It's just a matter yeah. of like when we have those moments where, like switching games and stuff. <laughs> it's like that's where right. everybody can then get up and get a drink or you know whatever. Yeah. Let's you just change, go change, change, anything up. change the screen. Let's you change the scene to say all like, the boring stuff we do in between. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby and grab ourselves a drink. I think we all learned something new about Stank Face Champs this week. That's right. Don't 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 <laughs> doubt the one ups because they'll bring the base on a future episode. Right. So I get, you know I I don't I don't want to talk bad about them because they they uh, they're great and uh, it just wasn't giving me what I wanted. From they they no. got what they wanted from it, <laughs> but, uh, but now I got what I wanted from this track. And uh, that that Castlevania track they're, just such a, they're, they're like the, they're such a terrible boyfriend. They just get what they want and they're gone. <laughs> and they're gone. <laughs> they just get their album sales. And they just walk out. Oh, I just wanted that fuzzy bass line, and they were like, no. right. <laughs> ah. That dirty stank face funk. Baby, come back. I can change. I can change. Here's a boom, 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 boom. I told you not to trust them. That. <laughs> nah. Oh mercy. Oh man. Well, um, again, thanks for thanks for hanging out with us, um, and yeah. we gotta have you on the show more frequently. Yes, we do. Sure. Um, the energy now is that right. I have my microphone on an arm. Uh, yeah, I love. I love <laughs> like it. some kind of professional. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll sit down and, and be on whenever you want. Excellent, excellent. Anytime. Just yeah. rap. Thank you for having me on. The only funny part is once we start doing that thing, Chell's gonna come for your throat. Yeah, yeah, Chell's trying to be our number one guest. <laughs> which, yeah. speaking of which, she's like, she already made a comment. She's like, invite me back it's on the show. I need yeah. three tracks. Well, we'll have her back. We'll have her back. Chell, if you're listening, 
She's probably not. We'll have you back. <laughs> <laughs> She's got, she has like the best online energy ever because she just she posts nothing but like really intensely positive things. Like so positive, like she's aggressively ah. positive. Where every tweet is like all caps. Like we, I love my friends. My friends are the best. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. I'm sure they really that's like that. All right, so that's what we need these days. Yes, yeah, like, we really do. We need a lot more of it. Um, so. Thank you for listening to our show. If you want to get in contact with me or Purnell or both of us or one of us, either or one half of us, of us, or half of us, we're both around. The best way to do that is to send us an email, rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. Um, and that's going to be for track suggestions, topic suggestions, food suggestions, deodorant suggestions. Yes. I mean, all of that stuff. Sonic toothbrush suggestions. Yes. Sonic the Hedgehog toothbrush suggestions. Oh, God. No one's brushing <laughs> with Sonic quills. The fastest brush alive. <laughs> uh, you can also uh, get a full track listing of this episode and uh, access to all of our episodes at our website, rhythmandpixels.com. We have a Discord server. Server. There's a link at the top of that page. To, um, that'll take you to our Discord server if you want to pop in and say hello. We check that pretty frequently, and there's a lot of good good friends and good listeners and other good podcasters that hang out there. You can go to youtube.com slash rhythmandpixels, and there we have a 24-7 8-bit and 16-bit radio station. I just did a big update to all the visuals on that, so if you want to check that out, you can listen to it while you're at work. It's a whole lot of fun for you and your coworkers to listen to video game music all day long. My coworkers hate me, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to uh, support the show, the best thing to do is to uh, tell your friends, tell your tell tell whoever, tell everybody, tell the world. Um, you can also uh, hit subscribe or whatever the like button is on whatever platform you're listening to this on. You can also support us by going to Patreon, patreon.com slash Rhythm and Pixels. And at all the levels there, you get access to a monthly live streamed episode. Our next uh, live streamed episode will be recording tomorrow after this uh, this this, ep- this current episode has been released. And the topic, so I don't forget in case someone's actually getting it from this episode, is modern day v- video game mascots. Right. So if there's a, a video game mascot for a modern day system or a modern day franchise or a modern day uh, uh, studio... Well, not so much that, like, a co- so much you would think should have been. Like, uh, mascots are kind of, like, passe nowadays, mm. but... Something it should have been. But it should have been. If they, if we were still bopping out these car- these character mascots and games and companies and franchises, who do you think deserves the mantle? Who do you want to make, take on the torch? Yeah, so the, the Patreon episodes are mainly all track suggestions from our listeners and from our Patreon members. And as a member of our Patreon, you get access to a live stream of us recording that episode. At higher levels, you get cool stuff like stickers, there's mugs, there's t-shirts. You even can get shout outs on our radio station on YouTube that gets into rotation every like 10 or 20 minutes. If you want to ever do that, that's something you can do. And at the end of every episode, we'd like to thank all of our Patreon members who are at the highest levels of our Patreon. The list is getting longer and my throat is getting sore. Er, we got to get you some lemon drop water. Yeah, I have, to get, I have to prepare every time we get to the end of the show. Um, but we have a new Patreon member, uh, Zach Thornborough. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zach, for helping support the show. Thank you kindly. It's much appreciated. And so now we'd like to thank Brooke. Thank you so much. Frankly Zappa, number one. Thank you so much. And then uh, the number one, no name, just the number one, uh, GameFan44. Mike Myers, Ulf Person, Vashon8060, Alex Messenger from AVGM Journey, a fantastic VGM podcast I believe have just celebrated this 100th episode. Yes. Which is awesome. Andreas Milberg, Brian Pitt, Cameron Worma, Carlos, Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast, a podcast all about Asian cinema and Kung Fu movies. Uh, Chris Tienerson, Chris Weisner, a.k.a. Musashi219. The wise guy, and also apparently the records keeper. <laughs> oh. Oh, for uh, Final Fantasy? Yeah, yeah. All those all those records there. You got tons. Um, Christopher Sendstrom, uh, Chuck Kowalski, Davy Cakes, David Taylor, and Ench- Enchilada Regol, Harold Howard, Jeff Maziota, The Tri Jeff, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, uh, Keith Shusterman, uh, Martiris, host of ReVGM, a podcast all about covers and remixes, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, another podcast that has not been around for a while. Come back to us, Forever Sound Version. But Michael Bridgewater has been around for a while, and um, I don't know. We love you, Michael. Uh, Rage Cage, host of the VG Emporium podcast. All the tracks that are fit to split. 
Okay, I always forget that what we say for that. So I just I just look at you I, until I, you say something. I literally change it every week. <laughs> uh, Reinhardt Zelkova, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, Taco, and then find uh, uh, Ed Wilson of the VG Embassy. Embassy. And then again, Zach Thorbach, uh, the VG Embassy, another great podcast hosted by our friend Ed Wilson. So and Zach Thornbach, I'll say your name again. Zach Thornbach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are all wonderful people. And get those track submissions in. Yeah, I hope hope to get them in. I uh, hope to get some. Can good- I uh, can I sneak a couple plugs in? Is of course this, you uh, can. Yeah, should I have done that before? You this could do whatever and you zone want, out, but you no, do whatever you want. I, I should have asked. I, I totally didn't even. No, think that's to do right. That. Yeah, uh, I really don't have that much to plug. Um, the uh, as we mentioned, the uh, the YouTube show uh, Pernell and Matt play games is a thing and is occasionally uh, has new episodes. I also have some audiobooks that are available on audible.com or Amazon. Um, you can just search my name, Matt Waldron, W-A-L-D-R-O-N. Uh, one that I would like to, to point out that I, I really liked doing was a, a novel called, uh, what's it? I was like, I hope it's the Polish one. It is. Yes! <laughs> the, da- the dame was a tad Polish. <laughs> which is a, uh, uh, a like a, a hard-boiled detective novel, but where the detective is a, a human armadillo person, and, uh, <laughs> and he's helping out a, a frog person who is uh, you know framed for murder, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and the guy who wrote it is uh, also a lot of fun. He, he wrote, wrote some fun books. Um, so look for that one on Audible. And uh, I think that's all I got. <laughs> well, I think you have a fantastic voice. I think oh, um, thank you. I think those will be really good for if our listeners are interested to check those out. And I got to say, I mean, I, this is a little bit of self-plugging here. I'm sorry. But Rob can back it because he's not on the episodes per se. So he can back it if I'm being crappy on this. But the Matt's voice and my voice on an episode of that show when we're like trying to play games like they they feed well off of each other in a hilarious way <laughs> that I honestly didn't yes. even realize until I went back and watched an old episode I was like oh my god this is ridiculous <laughs> uh, so hopefully it'll be entertaining if you decide to check one out definitely recommend the Ninja Gaiden yeah. episode the Battletoad episodes and the Blaster Master episodes just fair warning they are not rated G because I get really angry <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, a lot of that. We're gonna have links to those, uh, some of those episodes on the website, especially for for this episode specifically. And I'll put a little warning at the uh, on top of that before people click on it. Thank you. My uh, well, YouTube might already have put the may have already put those warnings up already. You know, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't chance it. <laughs> I know they're know. they're they're trying real hard. You have to tell it: is this for kids or is it not for kids? I'm like. Eh. No, it's not for kids. Yeah, <laughs> I have to do that for the for like the podcast. Like, is it for kids or not for kids? I'm like I, anybody could listen to this. I mean, right? It's just every for once, every, kids, every, though. If I, if, yeah. if I made this episode for kids, then I mean, I'd be. <laughs> Can you say the number six? <laughs> you said like, a, you said right. like a, he made like a Dora the Explorer like joke, and I was like. Can you find the video game music? <laughs> where's <laughs> Where's Matt? Can you can you say arpeggio? Then we, then we need like a like a like a long beat of silence. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean the opposite. It'd be the hilarious exact opposite. No, that is incorrect. Actually, that is not the sale we were looking for. This is the sale. Silence. No, that is correct. <laughs> Only you can prevent for this. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you everybody for listening to the show. Thank you to all of our Patreon members. Thanks again to Matt Waldron. Thank you. And um, thanks for listening to the show. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Have a great week. And remember, summertime's coming. This episode was called Stank Face Jams. Put your darn deodorant on because nobody needs to be smelling you. And quite frankly, don't leave that onus on someone else to not say it to you because they want to be polite. Just be considerate and courteous. Slap on some aluminum rub or whatever the hell they call it these days. I like called it that. Yeah, it's what, yeah, <laughs> it's literally yeah. what that's it what is. That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> clean, keep, clean yourself up and be nice and courteous to people out in this hot summer heat. <laughs>